Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got his name tag. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Good. So, what other wins, successes, what good things, Dan? Settlement Thursday. Awesome. Uh, buyer or seller? Uh, it's a buyer. Buyer, cut. Awesome. Where, and where did it come from? Where did the lead? Uh, SOI. SOI, good. Awesome. Love it. That's generally what I hear, and then we talk about it in here, and you guys don't go call your SOI. So, anyway, make sure you are. Stay in touch with them. Good. Who else? Wins or successes, Brad? Well, I, I made contact with a, a lady who wants to sell a house in the Salt Lake Valley that wants to move to my area, which is Tooele or something. Oh, you're in Tooele? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So, so that's a potential for both ends. Congrats. Good. Is that from uh, SOI? No, I haven't or? got anything in an appointment yet. I, oh, okay. She didn't want to make an appointment, but I, she did allow me to come by and take a Should we call appointment. her right now and schedule one? Um, <laughs> no. Tony said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. So, Tony, how did that go? The guy canceled well, I called, on him. I called him Monday morning to confirm, and he said, oh, some things have come up. I can't meet you in there. And there. So I, I texted him back saying, well, you know, hope everything's well with your family, and when's a good time, tomorrow or, or the day after? No text back yet. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll he'll keep on. Again. But but there there is that is one piece actually. As we had that conversation about scheduling a new appointment every day, do that. It, it keep in mind that as you do that, like when you see George up here or John or or sometimes even the brokers, when we run through and talk about if you scheduled one appointment every single day, it'd be 240 appointments. If you only kept half of those, it'd be 120 people that you actually attended an appointment. I mean, keep in mind that, that part of the process with this is if you don't have people that are canceling or rescheduling, you're missing out on appointments you could have had, if, if that makes sense to you. Because, And so we don't expect you to, them to all show up. So for me, th there's magic in just getting the appointment. And, and part of what I mean by that is is, and what I told Tony as we talked about it the other day is just stay in touch with the guy because if you remember as that particular guy was like we're not ready we're not ready so some of it is they'll agree to an appointment even though they're like I'm not ready I'm not ready and then they'll reschedule or whatever but if he stays in touch that guy is gonna go okay now that we're ready who's the person who has been like staying in touch that's stayed on top of things it's almost like you're applying for the job over the next month while the guy's getting ready that you, just by staying in touch. Does that make sense? So yeah, unfortunately, it, it canceled on him, but... Uh, Planted the seed. But we got some, yeah, exactly, so good. Who else? What other wins or successes? We got losses. No, we don't want to hear about those. <laughs> Actually, I, I have a guy that helps me coach my youngest son's baseball team that what he tells the team after we lose a game is we never lose. <laughs> We either win or we learn. And so there's no losses because we either win or we learn, right? So. No, we lose a lot. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the baseball team lose with I'm coaching. We've been losing a lot, unfortunately. So why? Yeah, I was going to say, I actually uh, tried that. Tell me more. You know, what else? Oh, good. And, um, and I, so I do Uber on the side. And uh, I picked somebody up from that just... She was telling me she wants nice. to buy. I was taking her to the airport, and I was just I just kept doing the tell me more. You know what else? And she just kept going and going. Nice. And then uh, I sent her an email. I'm like, hey, you know, here's three homes right now that are on the market that I think fit those needs. And she's like, you know, yeah, I like uh, when I come back, let me know or what's the first. She's like, what's your recommendation for the first step to go look at these? Nice, good job. Congrats. So it That's worked. great. Yeah, That's good. Awesome, man. We'll talk more about that in a minute then. So, all right, Jeff, you ready? Yes. Come on up. They're ready to start talking about Tell Me More. So Perfect. <laughs> okay, question for you guys. Number one thing you do when you get a buyer. Number one thing. You get to have to sign the buyer. Okay, that's from a real estate standpoint. From the oh, overall picture, get them pre-approved. <laughs> get them pre-approved. What's that? Pre-qualify? Pre-qualify, pre-approved, pre-qualify are actually two different things. Pre-qualify means that we've just run their numbers and you actually qualify to buy a home from a debt to income standpoint. Pre-approval means that we have an underwriting approval. Go out and find the house, get it appraised, get the title work done on it, we can buy it. So two totally different things, and we rarely use pre-qualify anymore when we talk about putting people in place to buy a house. It's general pre-approval. 
Number one thing we do when you bring someone to us and say, get them pre-approved, number one thing we do, you know what it is? Run their credit check. Run their credit. That is the very first no that you can possibly get on a buyer. Run their credit check. Just so you know, that isn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean we pull a credit and they, they don't qualify off the bat. That doesn't mean it's a dead in the water just yet. There's a lot of things we can do for them. We have, we have credit analyzers that we run on their credit score that tell us there's potential growth in their credit scores. There's a lot of things we can do. Just recognize that generally we come and sit with someone comes in and they don't immediately have a credit score that we can use. We can work with them. It's probably not going to happen overnight. There's a lot of cost involved into getting someone's credit high enough to where they can buy a house. And if they have to move immediately on that, we have what's called a rapid rescore, but there's three bureaus involved in pulling credit, okay? When you guys go out and do consumer debt, they generally just find one bureau and they do that. When you buy a house, there's gonna be three bureaus and we're gonna take the middle score, okay? To get those scores higher, if we have to do a credit analyzer and do rapid rescore, we've paid as high as $1,000 before to get that score high enough if they need to have it immediately. So, yes? Oh, what's, like how many points can you go up when you do the credit analyzer? Well, the credit analyzer is such a beautiful tool because when we run that analyzer, it takes all three bureaus and says, here's your potential on each one of them. Yeah. And it's kind of just a shot in the dark a little bit because when we get in and start playing with those numbers, we can find more accurately how much we can get those numbers up. But it'll give us kind of a range to move. For instance, someone comes in and they've got a 500 FICO score and they got a bunch of collections and they've maxed out their whatever debt they do have. The analyzer is going to say, you know, we can move them maybe 30, 40 points. 30, 40 points on 500 means nothing. Okay? How They're not going to be able to buy it. No, it's not instantly, actually. There's some things that we'd have to have them do to their credit, clean up some of their scores. If someone's got a pretty ugly credit score, or even someone who has the potential to increase their score, just know that's probably not a two week process. It's why you always want to get your, when a buyer comes to you and says, I want to buy a house. Don't spend much time with them before they actually find out what it is they need to do to make sure they can buy that house. Because worst case scenario, we could, we've had credit people we have to work with over a year to get them to where they can actually buy a house. But you know what? It's part of your pipeline. You're always putting people in your pipeline. We get them to work on it. I will tell you this. This is not to be negative on it. The people who are 500 FICO, they have significant credit or collection accounts, and they have enough. They're probably not going to go there. That's just the reality. I have a question because it came up yesterday when I was prospecting. I was speaking to a couple of guys in their driveway, and the one guy says, man, I, I do want to buy a house, but uh, I have no uh, paper trail. And I go, what do you mean? You mean that you're um, self-employed? Yes, I'm self-employed. I said, well, then they can use your past couple of years tax returns sure. to look at that. And his buddy says, he doesn't file taxes. And the guy says, yeah, I don't, but you know what? I always pay all my bills, and so I got a good FICA score. So what do you do with a guy like that? I told, to pay him, cash. I told him you have a significant other <laughs> 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 okay, he's going to have to pay cash. You know, lending is so tied to the government agencies that they've decided a couple of years ago they closed that loop. It used to be that you did not have to file tax. You could actually just go in with a credit score and a valuation on your property, a little bit of down payment, and they would let you buy a house. They closed that loop now. You actually must pay your taxes. You must file a tax return <coughs> in order to buy a house. So that that's probably just since our mortgage meltdown. Okay. Can you explain the credit analyzer? What is that? Yeah, What's that about? Okay, so the credit analyzer. I'm sure we go into this. I mean, can I take a couple <laughs> minutes? Are we okay? You're totally should I come back another less day? Less than two minutes. And, should I come back another day and do more on this? Because we could yeah. go really deep on it. Would you guys like to do that? Yeah. Okay, why don't we do that? Yeah. I'll come back and explain what the credit analyzer does well, and how Thursday. that works. What's that? Thursday. Thursday? Because I'm going to probably be late Thursday. So. Okay, <laughs> Okay. let's do that. That's a really good question, and this will help you guys understand how to get borrowers to the point where they can buy a house. What if I won't be here Thursday? Um, <laughs> well, you're in luck. Are you we taping it? Yep. Oh, you're recording. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect. We'll do that Thursday, because it might take us a few more minutes. Okay. Okay, good questions. Thank you. We'll be awesome. back. <laughs> Cool, thanks, Jeff. Uh -huh. Oh, so now wait, don't walk out yet, because okay. I want to build on something that he said, okay. and so I want you to hear it. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that, that, uh, that Jeff said is what he said the first thing you should do when you come across a buyer is what? Pre Get them pre-approved. And don't spend too much time before you do that. Here's what I would say on that is I agree, don't, you want to be careful with it, but as we're talking about this needs analysis thing, 
I would say don't be afraid to do a this needs analysis that we're what I'm teaching you guys in. Don't be afraid to do that even if so while you've scheduled them to go meet with the, the lender, don't be afraid to still do this needs analysis with them, even if they don't qualify. Now why? Why would I say that? Down the road they will qualify, perhaps. Okay, good. That's part of it. Yeah. We're working with a, a buyer that doesn't qualify right now. And, and it's all about the needs analysis. We're looking at other programs. We're looking at the um, other solutions for them. But but they, they will be able to buy. They're just not ready right now. Okay, good. Yeah, Brett? Then well, I think that the reason why you want to do needs analysis is one, is so you can find out what they want and what they need. They may not need a bigger house, as they think, or they may need a bigger house than they think, and that would affect the uh, pre-approval pre process, wouldn't okay. it? Okay, could, sure, yeah. First, it, it, well, depends. If their if their credit's bad, it's not going to make a difference yeah. to to what size a house. Yeah. Well, this, this is what we teach on our end. Your <laughs> SOI is a, is a very definite group, but their fingers go out. Thank you. That's times. that's exactly where I was going. Is is it's worth taking the time to sit down and take somebody through this process because what should happen is at the end of this, even if they end up not qualifying. What will happen is, is, is you will have solidified somebody as a part of your SOI now that is exactly what Jeff said. They're going to have had an experience with you that they'll go out and tell everybody they know you have got to work with X because they did such a good job. They really listened to me, which is a great segue. So thanks, Jeff. For, anyway. Um, so as a review, I want to do a little bit of review because we got a few people that weren't here on uh, Thursday. A couple th review things. Top three complaints about real estate agents. What were they? They don't call back. Okay, number one, they don't return my calls. They don't listen. They don't listen. Number two, they don't listen. Number three, they waste, they waste, my, time. They waste my time. Now, the one, there was one piece that I actually, after we got done with class on Thursday, that I realized, like, I didn't talk to you guys about the most important piece of this whole reason we're doing this needs analysis. Now, at, at, before I give you the answer though, I want to just remind you. Remember I drew this little uh, iceberg thing over here that's underwater? What percent of, of us is conscious? 10%. Ten. 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 Ten okay, 10% Ten of who you are as a personality is conscious. The other 90% is unconscious. Now, here's the other thing that happens. We talked a little bit about how we have programming that's gone on that's that's unconscious there's there's all this programming that's gone on that we're unaware of meaning we go out and interact in life and and we've got this programming there that that we're unaware of that is controlling us that's making decisions for us doing all those things if if you and, and I'll prove it to you that how much of this how this works if you have had the experience of getting in a car with somebody you're driving somewhere doesn't you know wherever you get into conversation with the person and then all of a sudden you're there at the um, wherever your destination was and you have no recollection of the drive to get there. If you can relate to that, raise your hand. So Now notice, almost everybody has had that experience of we get in the car, we, we start to have a conversation, we end up wherever it was we were driving to but we have no recollection of actually driving there because we were so involved in the conversation. So how did you get there? How did it happen? How did you not crash and you ended up there, yet you can have no recollection of like even driving there. It's just all of a sudden we were there. Okay, say more about that. What do you mean? Well, it's like you're having a conversation, you're engrossed in, but you can still be driving because you're mechanically doing what you... Yeah, you program, you program your brain to where you're going. It's a, I think it's what, what they're called, it, their habits. And they're, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just how we naturally are freaking out about backing up or driving anymore. You're just so naturally... You've practiced it to the point that, yeah, that you can just tell yourself, here's where we're going, and then boom, you get in the car and go. Versus, though, if you're trying to go somewhere you've never been before, now you've got to notice your attention is more focused there, right? Okay, so so we're, we're all clear on that. 10% of who you are is conscious, 90% is unconscious. Now, when somebody is going to, specifically when they're buying a house, one of the things that happens is they... The reason you will hear people say, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I'll know it when I see it, is another way of, of saying that 
it's down here in the unconscious. I just don't know how to put it and explain it to you because this is where it's logical up here. And I don't know how to say it in logical terms because when they purchase, it's typically off of an emotional or it's things that are tied to past experiences. And, and, and the reason, that, and this is where I was saying I left this piece out the other day, is the reason that they struggle with this is because what happens? So I'm going to give you a detailed drawing of your brain here. Okay. <laughs> So this is how your brain works. Your brain stores information in discrete locations. So your brain takes, when you have an experience, what happens is something like this. You have the experience, your brain takes that experience and then breaks it apart into components. So it stores the pictures in one area, the decisions you've made in another area, and then the feelings in another area. So what happens is, we have an experience. You go out and have some type of an experience. Your brain takes the pictures from that, stores it in one area. It takes the decisions that you've made about that experience, stores them in another area, and then the feelings that you have about it are stored in another area. And so what happens is the reason why they say, I don't know how to explain it to you, is because all of that information is stored in these discrete locations. So. Think of it this way, the, your brain stores information in a very messy way. So like, how, how many of you have seen somebody who's like, their desk is like a mess, but you go and ask them a question and they can find exactly, they know exactly where the paper's at, but it's, it's a mess. That's how your brain actually stores your information, is it's kind of a mess, but it knows where everything's at. Now. What has to happen then, in order for somebody to actually go out and, and buy? So now remember, part of what we talked about, and, and this is crucial, part of what we talked about last Thursday was nobody, um, nobody buys anything they don't need, right? Where everybody remember that, okay? Nobody buys anything they don't need. Now the challenge, for those of you guys that weren't here, the challenge is we think of that in terms of real needs. That, know, that, oh, I know people who buy stuff they don't need, but there are perceived needs, and people go out and buy stuff to fulfill a need. Might not be a real need, like food, shelter, clothing, those type of things, but they will go out to buy something to fulfill some type of a need, and part of that need might be just going to buy something just to buy it. So, um, I've heard it called retail therapy. Right? The <laughs> women usually appreciate that, right? Because have you ever, how many of you, and more so the women than the men, have clothes hanging in your closet that still have the tags on <laughs> Douglas is the only one, really? <laughs> I totally <laughs> So why would, why would people go buy something that they never plan on ever wearing that still has the tags on it? It was a bargain. Yes, there's some need. So there's some need. Sometimes it's just to do it to feel better. Why? Yeah, I was going to say, Dave, Dave Ramsey says that a lot, that people, um, you know, some people will go eat when they're down. Some people will go shopping just to fulfill something that... Yeah, just gonna, it makes better. them feel better. Just the fact that I could do it. But you're right, um, whoever said it, it, it was a deal. That, you know, there are a lot of people that that's just it. If it's the deal. If I want something, if I want to buy something and my wife doesn't want necessarily me to buy it, all I got to do is tell her it's a good deal, right? If yes. mom thinks it's a good deal, we get to buy it, right? She will not buy cereal unless it's 10 for 10. Yeah, I mean, it's like if it's a good deal, well, we probably shouldn't pass it up because you probably won't get that deal again, right? So just keep that in mind that how, how we do things, we always purchase things based on to fulfill some type of a need. Now... We aren't always aware of the need, and the reason we're not aware of the need is because the information gets stored in these discrete locations. Now, so here's the key. This is a key piece. Nobody is going to buy anything until there's a reintegration of this information. So this information that is stored in these discrete locations has to come back together again. And until that happens, they're not going to buy. When it happens is something that we call crystallization. So when this reintegration happens, now, here's the thing. After I left Thursday and I realized, holy cow, I didn't even talk to them about crystallization. We didn't even get to crystallization. And that's like the most important piece of everything we're going to talk about is crystallization. Until somebody crystallizes, they will not buy anything. 
doesn't matter what it is. You only will buy when you crystallize. And until they crystallize, they're not going to buy. Now, I'm going to come back to that over and over and over again. And, and what's going to happen is you're going to forget. So of all the skills and things that I'm going to teach you guys in, this particular skill of this needs analysis, the purpose of it is to cause crystallization. Now, why? That's when you'll buy. Thank you. See, we have one person who, who got it. So I'm going to keep re reinforcing it. Thanks, Pauline. So is, nobody's going to buy. They will not buy until they crystallize. Until they've crystallized, they won't buy. Go ahead. Can explain why? Yeah, because until they have crystallized, in the, it's, and this will make more sense to people who have been out actually showing homes to buyers, that they'll just kind of go, ah, I don't know, I just, I'm not sure. And until they understand the, the why, which really is another way of saying, think, great question, is remember we talked about there, there's features and benefits. They talk in features, but they buy in benefits. Until they recognize the benefit that is there, they won't buy. So the whole purpose of this needs analysis thingy that we're working on, the whole purpose of it is to cause crystallization. And, to, and until they crystallize, they won't buy. The, the per example, perfect example, our, uh, our buyer that is closing Thursday, she, uh, there was two homes that, the first time they bought a home, for, there was two of them that she really wanted. Um, one of them, her sister, <coughs> was uh, very outspoken in her getting it. Um, so we put offers on both houses, and she ended up not getting the one, and it was you know a down type of a thing. But the one that she has, she's paying less for, and she didn't realize that she wanted it as bad as she does. Now that it's all panned out and everything's worked out the way it is, she's more happy with the one that she got, and it's happened and for reasons that she didn't realize at the time. Mm -hmm. That it's all it's all uh, she, she, she couldn't. Explain. Explain it. Yeah, you can't explain it. And the reason is because it's in the unconscious and the, all of that information that's stored in the unconscious is stored in these discrete locations. And until it comes back together again, that they, that's where they'll go, I, don't, I just don't know why, but I just, I, there's just something not right with it or whatever. So part of that too, Alan, is, you know, sometimes people will say, make a list of all the reasons why you should and all the reasons why you shouldn't. Part of what they're doing, even though we don't realize why, when we're making that list of why we should or why we shouldn't, what we're really doing is we're trying to cause this crystallization. We're trying to get it to, to all come together to make sense to be like, aha. So think of it that way. Every time there is an aha moment is crystallization. That is, when you've had the aha moment, that is when crystallization has occurred, meaning all of this information that's this stored in these discrete locations has come back together again. And not every time is crystallization, so this is key, not every time is crystallization an aha moment, but every aha moment is crystallization. So, and the reason why I would say not always is crystallization that aha moment is because sometimes there are some people that would be able to tell you this is exactly why I want it and it's not going to be this, oh, does that make sense? It sounds to me like something there's nothing an agent can do about it since it's so subjective on their side. How, I mean, okay, great is, question. Is there something we can do to alter that? I mean, yes, I yes, so thank you, so the, perfect segue. I'm, what I am not saying to you is that we have to do this needs analysis to get somebody to crystallize. It, it, it happens on its own, but how does it happen? How it happens is something called information loading. When you are watching a football game, a basketball game, whatever, every, any commercial that, or TV show, any commercials that come on, when that commercial comes on, they are information loading you. What they are trying to do is load you with information to the point that when you go to the store and you're like, oh, I need some chips. What kind of chips should I get? <laughs> Doritos. Yeah, see, I, that's what I was expecting was more of the people saying Doritos. See, what's happened is they have information loaded you to the point that when you go, I got to get some Doritos. Is they've information loaded. So typically, now, what does that look like in real estate? How many people, how many, who thinks they have the record for the most number of homes shown before the person bought the house? So give me some numbers of like how many 
homes you've had to show. Nobody, none, nobody, nobody thinks well, they have I a big know of, I know of one that they've showed them twelve so far. Oh yeah, that's okay. Twelve. So I bet we got more than that. I've shown at least forty homes to one person, one buyer. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Good. Uh, anybody beat forty? Out of my ferry training in March, and somebody said they did over ninety. Okay, but I mean, I want to know from you guys here. So, if anybody beat 40? No. Okay, so why would it take somebody that long to figure out a house? To buy? They don't know what they want. They want. But, so you're right, they don't know what they want. But, but the problem is, so they don't want, know what they want. Can they tell you what they want? Yes. What have they said? Do you remember? I mean, they want an RV pad, they want an unfinished basement, and they want updated kitchen and they want to be able to put work in. Okay, so do, so do they not know what they want? Because it sounds like they know what they want. Well, they know they the don't features, know why. They haven't realized the benefits. Yet. Thank you. That's What's going on is they know the features that they're looking for, but it's not the features they're going to buy. They're buying the benefits that those features provide. And until they recognize that, they'll keep looking. And so what we have to do is keep information loading. Now what happens over time, so to finish off the question, what happens over time is after they've information loaded enough, they get so worn down that crystallization occurs. So that doing a needs analysis is not the best, excuse me, not the only way, it, but it is the best way to get somebody to crystallize. Because what's happening really, if you're showing somebody 40 properties, what they're telling you is, I haven't crystallized. I haven't crystallized on what it is that I'm looking for. So, yeah. so how then do we, as an agent, help lead them into the front end to... Be glad you're here. I'm going to teach you that today. <laughs> okay, I just want to be back up. So we don't okay. have to go through 41, 41 and done. done. Yeah, that's right, 41 and done. You are saying that uh, sometimes when we, what we do, we have to do a pro and a con of making this decision? Well, no, no, no. That's not what we're doing no, but with this, but sometimes that's what people will do, yes. Doesn't that, uh, your pro and con of features, but not benefits? Isn't right. Isn't that what happens? Right. Because most of us don't know what benefits we want. Right. Unless we... That's right. We don't know. And so... Because it's buried under here and it's stored so in the discrete sure location. A twin list. I mean, I like to use that idea, but I'm not sure if that's going to help us. To use which idea? A pro and a con. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. That won't help you. So, Dad, don't do but that. But some people do that. Well, some I mean, people do, do that for making decisions in their life. Now, I'm not talking real <laughs> estate, just general, how does people make a decision? Should I buy this car or that car? Well, make a list of the pros and the cons. So, but... Well, I was using that as an example of what they're doing to cause crystallization, but that's not what we're going to do to cause crystallization. That would so don't, yeah, don't that. leave here like, okay, I know how to do it, I'd make a pro and con list, because that's not what we're doing. The pro and con list would fall under features. Correct. Anyway. Yeah, we got to get to the why. Yeah, getting to the why is where we can then get to the benefits of it, okay? So, um, I'm trying to decide if... If I should do a demonstration for you. Does okay. somebody have an experience? Let me, I'm going to show you guys what, what this looks like. Okay? But I need somebody who has an experience that... Um, any skiers? Anybody in here ski? I'm snowboarding. Snowboarding? Okay. So um, ha have you had an experience snowboarding where you like really thought you were going to die? Have you gotten yourself <laughs> into a, a scenario where you were like really scared? Um. I mean, not, I don't know. Okay, so does, does anyone have, a, have an experience that they'd be willing to talk about, come up here and do it? You about do. What? Oh. what? You do. From skiing? Oh, yeah. From skiing, not from skiing. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Rock climbing, but not from skiing. Okay, rock climbing will work. Yes. Okay, will you, will you come and talk about it? Does it work? Oh, Mount Everest. When we went with Grandma the last time, and you thought you were young, you tried to do a 360. Oh, that wasn't scared. I knew it. I knew it. I, yeah, I got. I broke my goggles and cut my face, but yeah. but I didn't think I was gonna die. I'm just trying to okay. Now, so now what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a visual demonstration of what crystallization looks like. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Dan share with me this experience. Now, to help you understand now. Let me just reinforce as soon as uh, Logan gets in here. So <laughs> he's all trying to be sneaky. Come on in. So let me just reinforce to you what, what I mean by this. Now, remember I said that your information is stored in discrete location. 
we got the pictures in one area, the decisions in another, and the feelings in another area. So what happens is crystallization occurs when they all come back together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Dan tell us the story about rock climbing and how he got himself into that scenario. Now, along the way with that, what I want you guys to do is pay attention mostly to his eyes, okay? And watch what happens because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him tell the story and when somebody crystallizes, there is a reintegration, there's an actual physical change that goes on. And so what I want you to do is just pay attention to his eyes. Now, I don't want you to worry about it. A lot of times okay. when I do this, I'll have him step outside so he doesn't even know what we're talking about. But I'm going to get him back into the story of him telling it. So what will happen, though, is I'm going to have you tell it a couple of times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you. This works just like if we were watching something on DVR. We can rewind and watch it again, and it'll play out the same exact way as what it did. So I'm going to have him tell the story. At the end of the story, I'll then go back and say, okay, go back to this part and tell us from there and go forward. And then I'll just ask you a few different questions. What I want you to do, though, is just pay attention. Watch, watch his mannerisms, not just his eyes, but his body language, his face, everything. Okay? And then, and then I'll see if you guys were able to pick up on it. If not, I'll point it out to you. Okay? So I'm going to step over to the side. Would you come more in the middle so that if somebody's okay. watching on TV or whatever? So, okay. So tell us what happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, my uh, my brother and I went down to Monument Valley with my dad. He he was an audiologist and had a clinic down there. Um, so we were I don't know teenagers or something. Anyway, we 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 were out exploring um, among the rock formations, and we found a red rock formation that we wanted. We decided to climb. So. Uh, we started up and climbing, everything was fine, it was all good, we were getting up much higher than we realized we were getting. Um, we were probably oh, 50 feet or more up and then we decided we were going to go out on a ledge, there was a ledge that, uh, that would let us get up a little bit higher up onto, up onto the top of this mesa. And so we, we went out across this ledge and we didn't realize that it was it, the ledge kind of sloped. It was kind of this rounding slope thing and it was covered with sand. <laughs> so we went out on this ledge up, a, you know, pressed up against the wall and, uh, and the, the slope of the ledge we were on is getting more and more and more and the sand is there and we're slipping and there's nothing to hold on to. And then we realize, oh crap, <laughs> we're, we're 50, 60 feet up or whatever and we're about to slide off this ledge and so we decide that we're gonna go back down so we turn around we go back and my brother slips and starts going toward this rounding ledge and I'm, I'm I think for sure he's gonna die and uh, anyway he's he stops and uh, is able to scramble back up and and I go and I, I think we're both gonna be dead you know before we get down anyway we, we ended up going back down and, and, and everyone were okay, but. You survived, you didn't. We die. survived, we did not die. But yeah. It, uh, okay, so go back, go back to, uh, well, what I want you to do is give me some detail about it, but go back to right, you called it the oh crap moment, okay? Yeah. So go back to right before that oh crap <laughs> moment and take me right up to that moment and tell me as you're, so go back to, to in your mind, go back to that spot. Okay. Okay, right there, did you guys just see what happened? Okay, so keep an eye. So go back to that spot. Uh huh. So what? In fact, let me pause real quick and just explain. What's happening is when I when I I'm giving him an instruction to go back and picture it. And if you watch, what happens in his eyes is when he did that, he was basically in his brain going to where the pictures are stored and accessing that part of the brain. Okay. So so go back to that part of the, that to where you were. Now and then start to tell us about what was happening and what, what was going on, what, what, um, what you guys were thinking, all those kinds of things. Every, yeah, we were just going, we weren't thinking about any, it was just, we were just climbing, having fun, and then, and then it started to slip a little bit, every muscle tenses and trying to hold on to something, and there's, we realize there's nothing to hold on to. It's this just slick red rock, and, uh, um, and we keep slipping, and trying to trying to go and it's not working. 
so we we go back and then that's when um, I'm slipping and he actually slips down on all fours and starts going over the ledge so go go right to that point again mm -hmm. and so picture it and then so when you so you're right there uh -huh. and what were you feeling right at that moment I, I was terrified I thought my brother was dead and I was gonna be following right after him <laughs> So I was, it was not a good feeling. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. Give him a hand. Thanks. Okay, so did you notice now what, one of the things you guys, you guys probably didn't pick up on, and this is very normal what happens. When I asked him, and I probably should have had you step out of the room so I could have told these guys exactly where, but when I asked you, what, what I did is I was having him picture it, I was having him tell us about the decisions, the things that, that happened along the way. And then as soon as I asked, so what were you feeling at that moment? If you were watching, his eyes did a real quick like this. That's where kind of everything comes back. Now, as you're standing up here telling the story, pay attention to this. As you're standing up here telling the story, what are you feeling inside when you were standing there telling us about it? Well, the first time it was just explaining, but when you're telling me to picture and feel, it's it's bringing feelings back that we're not feeling. <laughs> yeah, so you could actually feel it again right yeah. now. Taking, see, that's what what goes on is that's, and so yeah, when you asked the question earlier of like, are you how, are you going to show us how to guide the people through it? That's exactly what I'm going to do. But the key piece of this is, and this is again a little bit of a reminder of what we talked about on Thursday is. The way we naturally communicate though, the way that we have been trained to communicate, we typically do it in a way that we block crystallization from occurring. We ask the yes, no questions. We don't give them the opportunity to, I mean, even what, just what Dan said there. The first time talking about it was kind of like no big deal, but as soon as I took him through it in a way that I start to ask the question of, so you know, give me the details and how are you feeling right at that moment? It's it, your brain then goes and acts, and remember, the way our brain works is like this computer. You give it an instruction set. It's no different than when I was asking Olivia to scribble on her paper and you know all of those things the other day. The way that the brain works, we can actually control it. Now, what's the difference between manipulation, though, and persuasion? Yeah, it's what our intention. We're not, so please don't think we're trying to manipulate people. We are trying to help them discover. Now, I will tell you, now luckily this doesn't happen very often, but occasionally you'll take somebody through this process and what you're gonna find out is they're not really a buyer. They're not really in a position or they, it's not what they really need to be doing. And that's okay, because remember what we had just is this discussion of, if you take somebody through it and it ends up they don't buy, what does it mean for you though? You can move on. Yeah, you're gonna move on. And here's the thing, how much time Douglas have you spent out showing to show 40 houses, how many hours? Way too at least 40 hours. Okay, so 40 hours Probably with that versus, so here's the thing. What we want to do with this needs analysis, it should take 45 minutes to an hour. So what you want to tell them is I want to sit down and spend 45 minutes to an hour to hear what it is that you're looking for in a home and to help you figure it out and to help us know what's going to kind of be the best. Now, we're going to get a lot of good information from this, but what's the purpose of it? Why are we doing the needs analysis? Save time. So we can... See, you guys have forgotten already. Good thing Pauline's here to help you guys out. So what were you saying, Carly? So that we can help them understand the benefits and, and actually do that crystallization. Yeah, thank you. So the word is, I'm going to keep testing you guys, and I'm not going to quit till I get a resounding when I test you. The purpose of us doing this is to cause crystallization. So what's the purpose? Cause crystallization. Okay, good. So, the, and, and why is that important? Let me just make sure you understand why. Why do we need them to crystallize? Because they're not going to buy until they do. Until they crystallize, they won't. They'll, they'll keep saying, no, let's, let's look at a few more. We're not sure. So one of two things is happening with this buyer that Douglas is talking about. Either they haven't crystallized or they're not a real buyer. One of the two. Is this just buyers or this is sellers also? Thank you. No, this includes sellers as well. That It's going to be more clear and things on a buyer than with on a seller, but same with the seller. When they're trying to decide which agent they're going to list with, until they crystallize, they won't choose one. Once they crystallize, they're the one. So, And in fact, with our loan guys here, I'm going to talk to you for one second about how you can use this with agents. So basically, with the, a, a seller, it's a... It, 
he already knows what benefits he's looking for. He's not looking for benefit in the house anymore. He's probably going to get something out of it. He wants the money. That's a feature, right? But his benefit is to be someplace else. Could be. Yeah, the, I'm going to give you guys today, well, I'm going to give you the 15 benefit words, and it'll be one of those. The hard part is, again, just as we talked about the other day, you got to be so careful because how easy is it to for you to decide what it is when maybe that's really not what it is. You know what it is for you, but that doesn't mean that's what it is for them. And so that that's the difference of when I had Tony up here and I, or who did I have up here that I did the describe for me your ideal home? Who? It was Olivia, yeah. So, and she was telling me rather than me asking questions. See, typically we ask the question of, well, do you want a big yard or a small yard? Well, I mean, that's us trying to manipulate the, this versus if I say, so describe the ideal yard, now she's going to tell me for her what's important versus the other way. I know it's some small things, but Carl? Okay. I have two experiences of buying houses, one in Baltimore and one here in Utah. And both times, I decided I wanted that house when I walked in the living room. Mm -hmm. My first house in Baltimore, I liked the archway going into the dining area and the carpeted stairs going upstairs. When I saw the house I'm in now, I like the huge living room and the hardwood floors with the fireplace. It's like I made a decision that quick. Is that normal or is that or, or is that different for well, me? Yeah, what you just said to me is as soon as you saw those things you crystallized. Right. It was like that. Yeah. And if somebody asked me so, what are you looking so for? So let me ask you this. What is it about those things that you liked? It was just Now notice the question I'm asking is very neutral of this. So what was it that it's you just liked? the way it made me feel immediately? It's like, wow. You know, it was like when I saw that archway going into the dining room, it's like, that is really neat looking. You know, it was a nice So arch. see, what, what you guys don't recognize now, but he just told me what the benefit was. Picture. I like the way it looked. It felt like home. Yeah, he liked the picture. He, the way the image, it's an image. Yeah. Him. So really, one of the benefit words, I'll give you one of the benefit, one of the benefit words is aesthetics. And typically, and, and I knew the moment he started telling me the archway, the fireplace, is that what he said? Yeah, Ar archway, the, had the fireplace, Although the, I've never the hardwood floors, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, what, it, it's what you saw, it's, it's seeing those things that is what you were looking right. for, right? And if somebody told me, what are you looking for? He couldn't have told you. you I couldn't have told to tell you that, that. I'm looking for an archway going into the dining room, or I'm looking for a large living room. But with you, now your assumption is that you wouldn't have been able to tell me. But how many times did the agent who helped you sit down and communicate with you the way that I'm going to teach you to communicate with people? They did. I guarantee it. Instead, they said, "How many bedrooms? How many baths? How many car garage? How many what square footage on the lot? Blah blah blah." There's an element that I don't think you can have a word for because I know when I bought my last house, as soon as I walked in, it felt like home. And I couldn't tell you why it felt like home. It felt like home. I said, this is where I'm supposed to be. It was almost intuitive. Yeah, well, again, now, here, here's the problem. When you're saying you couldn't have told me, you, be, the reason we think you couldn't have told me is because you're, it's stored in the unconscious. But if I asked you the questions, if I had you come up here and sit down and talk to me, both you and Carl, you would be able to eventually, what Carl would tell me is, I like the way the things look. But the problem is, in the beginning, it, it, to begin with, you're right. Right now, if I said to you, tell me what makes it feel like home, you'd go, I don't know. It just, it's just when I get in there, I know it. But, I, I'll, and I'm going to give a demonstration. I'll let you guys see it. So you'll get to see what I mean by that. So now, for the lone guys, so for Jeff and Logan. Um, when I learned this process, so I, I actually flew to San Francisco and spent three day, three full days with the first time I went through this training. And there at the training, there was me as an agent, my broker was there, we had a financial planner, an insurance guy, I think there was two insurance guys actually, and then a loan officer. And the loan officer in the process of this, so now I've been teaching it to you guys as to like with a person who's going to be buying a house and it's just easier to teach it you, the, to you that way. But the same thing applies with a seller. Same thing for, from a loan officer. If you were wanting to get an agent's business, the best way to do it would be to sit down and say, describe for me your ideal loan officer. And anybody who's been in the business in, for much time at all, closed many deals, is going to go well you know they're going to be able to detail it out so what happened is in practicing it which i'm going to have you guys do today this loan officer asked me that question 
said, describe for me the ideal loan officer. Well, I just went through, okay, they're not going to tell me that the, the loan's ready when it's not. They're going to be honest about where, where things are in the process. They're going to tell me exactly where it's at. If there's a problem there, I mean, I just detailed out what I would want them to tell me. And at the end of the process that we went through, what happened is I remember saying to this loan officer, because he was from the Bay Area, this loan officer, I said, I wish you were a loan officer in Salt Lake because I would give you all my business. Now. How much did he tell me, though, about what he was going to do? <laughs> Nothing. He just had asked me, describe for me the ideal loan officer. I described it to him exactly what I wanted in a loan officer. And then because he listened to me, I felt like this guy knows how to do loans, which the truth is I don't even know if he did or not know how. <laughs> now, so you still would have to actually follow through with it and do all that stuff. But they will tell you. It, it, you'll hear John Syatt sometimes say it's an open book test. This is how we get it to be an open book test. You want to find out what's important to somebody, you just need to ask it, but you've got to ask it in a way that allows them to tell you all the detail about it. Okay? Does that make sense? What questions? Yeah. Last time we did this, um, it was very interesting when he said just one wrong word. I feel myself shutting down yeah. and I had to like really push through to finish the exercise and it was just a couple of words yeah like mentioning bedrooms I don't remember what it was yeah I don't remember it either but like yeah yeah so as soon as I started to try to take control or whatever whoever it was was it me no we were in a role play in the practice yeah as soon as you try to get in the way you'll block it that's that passing the baton thing that we did. As soon as you start to take control of it and ask yes, no questions or something about a bedroom or whatever that they haven't brought up, yeah, it does. It shuts it down and it blocks the communication. So this process really is very good, but you got to stick with the process and follow. Uh, you know, the idea of passing the baton, trying to take control. What if you're not understanding what the person describing? So tell me more about that. It'd be like uh, you're talking to someone and maybe you didn't hear me right. A couple of you caught on to what yeah, I just did, yeah, right? Exactly. That's what you do. That, I no, just I answered that. your question. OK, good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was so, curious how many of you were going to get. Uh, so that's how you clarify something you're not understanding. Mm -hmm. Say more about that. Know. OK. Tell me more about, say more about what that. See, now, notice, by, I state, the key to this is staying neutral. It's not saying, well, you know, asking a, a yes, no, a closed-ended question. It's, the key to this is saying, well, so, you mentioned this. Tell me more about that. And then you sit back and go, uh-huh. Oh, wow, interesting. Mm hmm sure. Okay, so, everybody good? We clear what questions? Because I'm going to go on to the next step, unless you have questions. Okay, good. So, the first step along the way is we want to use a directive. Now, so remember, directives. Direct, we're, we are there to direct this conversation. We're not there to be in control of this conversation. We're there to direct it. So we're going to start with a directive. The directive is going to be, so with a buyer of a house, we're going to say, describe for me your ideal home. That's it. And then you just stop. So the directive is, now remember, directives are going to be described for me, Tell me about, share with me. Um, that's probably good enough, yeah. De describe for me, share with me, tell me about those type of things that are going to be the, the directives. Now, as soon as I do the directive, though, kind of as a subcategory of these directives, in fact, think of this as tool number one, okay? So this is going to be tool number one that we're going to use is we want to use directives, okay? So on the directives, we then want to use afterwards, we're going to use what's called prompters. And then we also want to do positive feedback. Think of positive feedback as, as we're going to uh, repeat and affirm, okay? So part of what we're going to do, so the prompters are going to be keep going, tell me more, what else, say more about that, something like that. So we're just going to do share with me more, keep going, what else, tell me more. Those are the prompters. Positive feedback is I want to be really listening and, and shaking, my, be like the bobbing dog in the back of the car, you know, just their heads just bobbing, okay? We're doing that of, yep, okay, yeah, oh, oh, interesting, wow. 
So they they tell you something about oh it would have this so if it was Carl it have it has this arch and this oh wow you want to kind of be excited with them about it yeah no I can totally understand that yeah that sounds great keep going and then they'll just keep going okay now the key to it and why I like using that passing the baton thing is once I hand why the baton I let him have it don't try to you know get it back until he's going to hand it to me so. When he hands it to me, then I'm going to use the prompter to say, oh, you're doing great. So I'm going to positive feedback. Oh, you're doing great. Tell me more. He talks. As soon as he tries to hand back the baton, oh, you're doing an excellent job. What else would you need? Say more about that. Keep going. <laughs> when do I stop? Tell they say, I have nothing else to tell you. As soon as he says, <laughs> good try. <laughs> as soon as he says, as soon as he says, I don't know what else to say, that's about it. As soon as they say something like that, then you're done. Now, what's going to happen though, so let's, let's assume we've been doing that and this time say that's about it. What else? Uh, you know, that's, that's about it. Okay, keep going. What is that? What's that going to feel like if he's if he says that's about it, and I go, oh no, keep going. He's going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, he's going to be he's like, not yeah, I just said that's about it, right? So so we keep doing this until they say, that's about it. I can't think of anything else. I don't know what else to tell you. So we keep using. So we're going to start with one directive. Now this sometimes people get lost in this, so make sure you hear it. I start with one directive until. And I stick, I don't go to any other directives. I'll use prompters, keep going, what else? Oh, you're doing awesome, tell me more. That kind of a thing, until they say that's about it. Until they say that's about it, you're not gonna do anything but keep handing them back the baton. You're doing great, tell me more, what else? Keep going, question? Okay, so um, are we good with that? Go ahead. What if they leave out a key factor, like how many bedrooms and bathrooms they want? Do you then, when they said enough, do you say, well, how many bedrooms did you want? I mean, to, you know, if they leave out key things. Well, so here's the question for you. Describe a key thing. Well, a key thing is, is the, the typical questions you ask with yes or no answers. It's, you know, bathrooms, bedrooms, square footage, uh, how many floors, do you want single floor? two-story, I mean, those things that, that they might have just not even thought about. And you, yet you need to know that in your search on their behalf. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead, Why? No. I was going to say, I, the experience that I had with that girl in the car, she just, you know, I was like, hey, well, tell me how many bedrooms and baths to start out would you be, you know, and then she told me that. And then once I got the basic information, you know, which is like the 10%, then I was like, oh, tell me more. What else? And then she starts pulling out, you know, well, we want to be close to downtown. We want something new. And as I kept asking her more and more, yeah. she was like, well, actually, I want more than 1,500 square feet, and I want tall ceilings. Oh, and I have to have a wood floor. And that was just after, tell me more, tell me yeah. more. So eventually she stopped. That's the thing. Is here, if, if what I'm doing is, tell me more, what else? Keep going. What are the chances they're not going to tell me stuff that is important? And I'm not, I'm like, for real, I'm asking, like, what are the chances of that? Slight. Yeah, very unlikely that they're going to skip bedrooms and baths if I keep saying what else, what else. Now, let me give you an example, though, because I, I understand where the question, where you're coming from with it. I had an agent that I had trained this in, she, that she came back one day and said, okay, I just went and did the needs analysis with this guy. He's a professor up at the University of Utah, and I sat down and I said, describe for me your ideal home, and he said, it would be a 10 minute walk from the University of Utah, and then he handed the baton back to her and she said, okay, what else, keep going. No, that's it. <laughs> and she was like, so she came to me saying, what do I do? Because he didn't say anything, but it's gotta be a 10 minute walk from the University of Utah. And I said, well, okay, so here's what you do. Now, because what, do we ever want to make somebody wrong? No. I mean, we never want to be like, no, there's got to be more than that. You can't, you know. But she was frustrated because she felt like he gave me, like, one thing. So I said, okay, here's what you need to do then. Go find houses that are in his price range, that are within 10-minute walk of the University of Utah, and go show him 
those houses, there was two, I think, if I remember right. So she went and showed him two, and he said, great, I want to buy this one. Now, what she found out later on was this guy was a professor up at the University of Utah. He was doing research, like, all day. Like, from sunup to sundown, he was there doing research or teaching a class or whatever. And the only thing he needed this place for was to go back to go to sleep, take a shower, and then go back in the morning. So for him, all that mattered was he liked to ride his bike, actually, to work. But in Utah, in the winter, if it's just snowed, how easy is it going to be to go ride through a foot of snow on a bike, yeah. right? Not very easily. So as a result of that, he wanted it to be, I don't want to have to walk more than 10 minutes in the snow if it happens to be snowing. And he bought the house. And it was as basic as you could get, like, what, and I don't remember all the details, but like one bedroom, one bath. I mean, it was like there was, but he didn't care. All he needed it for was a place to come crash, to sleep, take a shower, go back to work. That was it. So that's how we find out sometimes is we don't want to just assume because they said 10 minute walk from the university. Well, there has to be more because we assume well, I wouldn't do that. And because we wouldn't, we assume they wouldn't. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, we'll just go. If they're not giving you everything else, go off, go off of whatever they give you, and then and then this this buyer we're dealing with, we had we went through this needs analysis thing. She described her home. She had two different homes. She wanted one with horse property. If she couldn't find that, then she wanted one in Sugar House. And we so we set up these search parameters and everything else. And then she was coming back to us with these homes that she was finding that was completely different than what she had told us. Mm -hmm. And so we're going, well, we definitely need to revisit this and go back and change it. But but she didn't know that until she got out and was looking. Yeah. So but now and the reason she didn't that? know that is because she hadn't crystallized. See once they crystallize they know. So I after I went to California and was training this, I came back. The first buyer that I had after that, I just was like, all right, I'm going for it. Oh, which actually, let me back up. <laughs> first thing I did when I got back, when I got home, I sat down with my wife and I said, all right, let me show you what I learned. And I said, describe for me your ideal home. And she started to, and, and then I was, yeah, what else? Keep going, tell me more. And at one point she was like, this is weird. And so like, I was panicked because she was like, this is weird. I would hate it if somebody did that to me. And I was like, oh crap. Because then I'm like, I just spent three days learning how to do this. I'm excited about it. I come home and you're telling me now I would hate this. So I called up the guy that trained me in it and I said, okay, help me out because like I just got home all excited and my wife was like, this is weird. And the first question, so this is important. Make sure you have this for your notes. The first thing is you have to have permission. In order to do this, You've got to get permission. When you're going to communicate with somebody where they're going to start accessing this 90%, the stuff that's stored in the unconscious, he said to me, did you get permission? And I was like, it's my wife. I don't need permission. <laughs> you still need permission, okay? So you get permission. And I didn't ask for permission. So let me, get, let me give you a script for permission, okay? Now, it's not crucial that you say it exactly word for word, but you do have to do it the concept, okay? So what you want to say is, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you a few questions. Some of them may feel personal, maybe things you haven't considered, something like that. that. I'll give this to you guys a couple times. So is that going to be okay? So first thing, the key pieces on this, make sure you underline two words. In order for us, so underline us, to determine whether I can help, underline help. Because you tell me, so just listen for a second. You tell me which one feels better. So Carl, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you a few questions, maybe things you haven't considered before about the home. Is that going to be okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, now listen to this one. Carl, in order for me to determine whether I can work with you or not, I need to ask you some questions. Is that going to be okay? Which one feels better? First, first one. Why? If I can work with you. Because it's in order, the second time I said in order for me to determine if I can work with you, that sounds not as good as in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you. See, help sounds way better than work with, right? And that's what we want to do is help them. So in order for us, so as, if you're still writing down, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you a few questions. 
and then from there you can either say they may feel personal they may be things you haven't considered maybe um, things on the, on the house you haven't even thought about yet is that going to be okay so we got to get permission to talk to them at a different level than what people are used to being talked with about okay so in order for us to determine whether or not it can help you so that's going to be the first thing we do as soon as they say yes then I'm going to jump into the directives of okay great describe for me your ideal home what two words did you say to underline? Us, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help. So us and help. And I just want you to underline them because I promise you, if right now I had you guys break up into groups and just practice the permission script, some of you would say, in order for me to determine if I can work with you, so you got, because that's just how, what's ingrained there. So you got to change it to, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you. I need to ask you some questions, maybe things you haven't thought about, you haven't considered, they may even make you a little uncomfortable. Is that going to be okay? Now I know you guys are going to be afraid to say they may make you uncomfortable, but it's really not a bad thing to say to them because then that way they're giving you permission to be uncomfortable. I'll tell you, it's typically not going to be, so if you're worried about it, then just don't say that, but it's typically not really going to be uncomfortable. But in, in a lot of ways you're actually letting them know it's going to be okay to talk about some things that might be uncomfortable. So, with that being said, let's go through now and make a list of the 15 benefit words. And then we'll uh, jump back into this, okay? All right. So, there's 15 benefit words. First one we already talked about was Aesthetic. aesthetics, right? Second, and, and these are not in any particular order. In fact, I may even we're testing me to see if I can come up with all 15 on my own without. Okay, the next one is going to be love, is gonna be one of the benefit words that they're gonna talk about. Now, um, so let me back up, on aesthetics. Aesthetics is gonna be when they're talking about specific things. I mean, if they, just because they say hardwood floors doesn't necessarily mean that aesthetics is what they're looking for, but the person who starts getting into, it's gotta have the chair rail and the crown molding and they get into the detail. Let me guess, Carl, you like Big chair rail and car, crown moldings and <laughs> all like that stuff. Molding. Yeah, see, I know I've learned a ton about him just from that little conversation that I can get now. So now, when I walk into a house, I'm not gonna talk about the living room, I'm gonna talk about Wow, look at that archway. And the, I mean, I'm going to talk to him about is that the kind of stuff that you're, you know, that's going to get him excited, okay? So aesthetics is what it looks like. Love. Now, for some of the men, we don't want to say the word love or whatever for whatever reason, but sometimes they'll talk about a uh, family room or the kitchen is going to be about spending time with the kids. And when they get home from school, I want to be there to find out how their day was and have them working on their homework while I'm sitting there doing the dishes or whatever. So when that happens, typically it's going to be something about love. So for men, though, they they won't say that. They'll you know they'll hey I like to have my buddies over and we spend time watching a game or whatever. I mean you're probably not going to say oh that's because you you want to show your friends how much you love them. I mean <laughs> we probably don't feel so you could say bonding. So this is going to be you know time with the guys in the man cave bonding right. And so they'll say, yeah that's what it is. Okay, but you need to know really what they're talking about is love. This is about me enhancing the relationship with whoever, okay, is love, okay? Next one is comfort. Now on comfort, think about comfort as creature <coughs> comfort, okay? So like, um, we have a, a little Shih Tzu dog, and she like jumps up on the couch, and, and there's a blanket that she'll sleep on or whatever, and she'll get up on there, and she'll like fluff it up, and then she'll you know, lay down and it's not quite right. She gets up, she readjusts things, and then she lays down and bam, she's down, right? Anybody that's got dogs can can understand that. That's what I'm talking about comfort is that, okay? So it's like sometimes, um, in fact, some of you, when I was talking to you about um, the home high on the hill with a view of the city lights, some of you said it's, it's gonna give just that peaceful feeling. If they're saying that, they're talking about comfort. It's the, Okay, I can let the stress of the day go. I can just relax, okay? So that's comfort, okay? Next is going to be, let's go value, okay? And then I'll do five with it because these two are somewhat related. So value and economy. Now let me explain the difference. If somebody is talking about value, if value is their benefit word they're looking for, value is about making money. 
So if they're talking about, hey, I want to get this property and we're going to have to sell it in a couple years and we want to make sure that we're making a profit when we sell it, that's about value. They're talking about value, making money. Economy is about saving money. So what would be some features of a house that somebody would talk about if economy was their benefit? What would be the features, if they're worried about saving money, what would be features they would talk about? Solar. Uh, Solar, good. Uh, energy. Yeah, energy efficient, all those type of things is what, so if it's about, hey, we want to make sure we get a house that, we, sometimes they want a newer house, somebody will want a newer house because we don't want to have to spend money doing all these repairs and stuff, that they, they want to save money. Could it be the other way too though? Could you have buyers that are like, I want a fixer upper that's cheap, and then that I could myself in time, you know, like. That's like your present value? Well, so. That one is, let's go to number six then, we'll use that. Act, that one actually, which what Tony just said is they need a project. What they're probably talking about is self-actualization. So self-actualization is about, you know, the poets need to be a poet or an artist to be an artist. It's, it's about them, like, or Tony saying, I just need a project, something that I can work on. That it's about how that's going to make them feel to get that house and go in and do the repairs. So it may not be that it's about making the money off doing the repairs. It may be, I want to do all the repairs so that I can like be like, I did this, you know? And it's, so it's about how it makes them feel, okay? Next, prestige. The other that I would throw in with that is gonna be esteem. Prestige and esteem. So think about prestige and esteem of being two sides of a coin, kind of like heads and tails of a thing. So prestige and esteem, esteem is how it makes me feel. Prestige is about how others are going to feel. So think of it this way. I want to, when I drive up to my house, be like, wow, I live there. That's esteem. If it's, when I have my friends and family over, I want them looking, going, wow, I can't believe you live there. That's prestige. So if it's what they're looking for is prestige, it's about how others see them. Esteem is how they see themselves. Okay? Number eight is going to be convenience. I before E, convenience. I'll just make it look scribbly. You can't tell. <laughs> and you can't tell if I did it I or not. So convenience. So convenience, think about convenience is, is about the ease of it. A lot of times, the, so again, that guy that, that, that I told you about, the professor, I, he wanted to be 10 minute walk. What the benefit he was looking for is the convenience. I need the convenience of bam, I'm, I'm walking, I, get, I jump on my bike, I'm to home. I jump in bed, you know, get up, take a shower, jump on my bike, I'm back to work. That's convenience, okay? So convenience is about making things easier. A one-level property, something like that. Okay. Number nine is going to be, let's see, which one should we do next? All right, we'll just get it out of the way. Six. So <laughs> what are the benefit? Where I usually try to save that one for later because usually then the class goes like, in a whole different direction. But <laughs> one of them is going to be sex, okay? So one of the benefits. Now, I'll give you an example of this one. At one point, I had a guy that was struggling with this process, and he had said to me, can you come and sit in on while I do a needs analysis with a client? And I said, yeah, sure. The guy was up in Park City, and he had his client come down to the office, which is actually one of the buildings just across the parking lot here. And um, the guy came in, and he sat down, and he took him to, you know, describe for me your ideal home. The guy starts to describe the ideal home. And as he's describing it, he keeps talking about this hot tub in the backyard. Keeps going into, you know, I want to have this hot tub and my wife and I will go and spend time out there. Well, the agent then says to him, which I haven't taken you through this whole process yet, but after he got past, you know, the directives and, and the, what we're going to talk about over here, which is modifiers and stuff, he um, had asked him, so what does having this mean to you? And the guy said, well, just, you know, my wife and I will have some private time out in the hot tub. And, and the agent says, well, so if I understand you correctly, really, what you're looking for is someplace for you and your wife to have really good sex. And, and the guy was like, well, yeah, but I wasn't going to say that. I mean, so, so here's the thing. You don't have to say, similar to love over here, we don't have to say the word sex. If they're sitting there talking about that, I would personally probably have said it. So really what this hot tub's about is you and your wife having some private time together. But in my mind, I'm knowing what he's talking about, right? Or some intimate time or whatever. So, 
What? Dylan knows what you're talking about, too. <laughs> Not yet, he doesn't. <laughs> He's only engaged, so. He's excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. Okay, so that's, that's the next one. All right, next is going to be um, health. So health. If what they're talking about, so now some people may say, I want to have a one level, one story home. Oh yeah, sorry, no, Jeff, I only, I'm sorry, I only wanted you to, no, I only wanted you to stay for the first like five minutes, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you stick around for an hour? See ya. So help, if what they're, if, if what they were talking about was um, a one story home, if it was about convenience of I just want everything on the same level, but it could be of, hey, I've got bad knees and I don't want to have to go up and down stairs, that's going to be help. Uh, another one, I want a swimming pool in the backyard. Well, what do you need the swimming pool for? Well, I, I had a heart attack and, and the best way for me to exercise is out in the pool. Then the reason they want a pool is for health. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, recreation. This is actually one of my benefit words, is recreation. So they may want the house for recreation. So the home that I live in right now, prior to us buying it, as my wife and I just started talking about buying a house, one of the things that, that we talked about is we wanted to have a lot that was at least one acre in size. And so now remember, we talked about, um, for those that weren't here before, remember we talked about the term buyers are liars and I said that's not true. Buyers are not really liars, but, but you guys will say it and you'll hear agents say it all the time, buyers are liars. Well, where that comes from is they will show up like I would have if I was sitting down with you and you had begin to begin with and said, describe for me your ideal home, I would have told you, I need a home on a one acre lot. And then I went and bought one that's not on a one acre lot. So you would say, well, buyers are liars. He said he wanted a one acre lot and then he goes and buys a quarter acre lot. Well, the purpose, why do I want the one acre lot? Well, if you had asked me that question, what I would have told you is the reason I want a one acre lot is because so at the time, I think you were like eight when we I was moved? way younger than that. We lived there for 16 years. So oh, five. that's true. Okay, he was five. So, but at the time, I'm picturing Douglas and I out in the backyard, playing catch, throwing the baseball around, doing all, you know, him being able to hit the baseball, stuff like that. So I'm like, I need a one acre lot at least to be able to do that. And yet we bought a quarter acre. Now, if you got to... Why do, you, why do you want the one acre lot? For me, it was about, I want to be out having fun in the yard with, with my son, is what I was thinking. But then I went and bought a quarter acre lot. So typically we would say buyers are liars. But the truth was what I was looking for recreation. So now what is right outside of my backyard is a neighborhood park. That's this huge park that's in the backyard. The beautiful thing with that, especially with recreation, my concern of getting a one acre lot, what goes along with having a one acre lot? A ton of work, right? And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend my Saturdays out mowing the lawn and doing all that stuff. I would rather be out playing and having fun. So for me, one of my benefits that I'm looking for in a home is recreation. Now, which you typically would think, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, but it does because I don't want to be out working in the yard all day on Saturday. I'd rather go fishing. I'd rather go do fun things than be out working in the yard. So does that make sense? So one of the benefit words is recreation. Well, I was thinking of, of having, if you have dogs, you want a trail where you can walk the dogs instead of just walking them in the neighborhood. Yeah, could be. That, would that be of the recreation? Could be, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if what they were saying is, yeah, look, I like to get out and take my dogs and go out and spend time doing all of that. So it's just a question of, is it about the, um, the love they have for their dogs or is it about, because it could be, if I, well, I love my dog, I want to take care of it. It could be that or it could be, no, it's for me, that's what I enjoy doing and so I don't want to have to be cooped up and walking around the dog and whatever. So it also could be aesthetic. So well, I want to take the dog because I like the view of what I'm seeing. So, but that's where, again, we got to ask the questions and let them discover it rather than us play kind of a guessing game of which one it is. Does that make sense? Okay. So number 12 is entertainment. Number 12 is entertainment. One of the other benefits that people will have is entertainment. What, what they're looking for, so it could be that somebody says, we want a swimming pool in the backyard. 
Well, as you ask them questions about the swimming pool, what comes up is, oh, we actually probably will never get in the pool, but we actually just, it's the ambiance that it sets, because we like to have our friends over and, and spend time, and, but, and it just kind of sets up everything perfectly with having the pool. We'll probably never actually swim in it, but you know, we want it to just look good because we like to entertain. So entertainment is going to be another one of the benefit words. All right. We're starting to run down here, and I'm missing out on, what am I missing? Security. Yes. Thank you. Did you go back to your notes? Yep, you are. <laughs> good. You're, not, yeah, not all at once, but yeah, you're right. Okay, good. Which gives me that, that reminds me number 14, too, so good. All right, so security. What, what is security? Safe. Safe. No, it's not. So, which, number 14 actually is safety. So that, that's where it's a little bit of a challenge is because safety is actually number 14. So safety is about our physical safety. Security is peace of mind. So you might want to put in parentheses outside of security is that it's peace of mind. In fact, um, it used to be that they called a, um, what we call today a security system. When I was a kid, they were called a burglar alarm. Which one sounds better? Burglar alarm? Or security. <laughs> and why? Security. Yeah, so, but, but you stop and think about it. That's the reason they've changed the name now. When I was a kid, there was a burglar alarm. Today, it's a, it's a security system. And the reason it's a security system is it gives you peace of mind. That's what it's giving you. So, so somebody sometimes will say, we want a fully fenced yard. Well, why do you want the fully fenced yard? Well, because we want our kids to be able to go out and play in the backyard. Well, is the kids playing in the backyard safety or is it security? Well, it's safety for the kids, but what does it give the parents? Peace of mind. It's the security. So think of it as peace of mind. Now, again, this is going to be another one that if you're sitting down with the client and they're describing that, you're not going to say, oh, so what you're looking for in the backyard is security because they're, they may relate to it as, well, no, I'm not worried about the kids being kidnapped. I just don't want them running out in the road. So, yeah, so it's, it's, I would say that to the person of, so really what you're looking for with that backyard then is peace of mind. And they're going to say, yes, it's, it's a peace of mind that the kids aren't going to run out and get ran over or whatever, okay? Privacy. All right. Number 15 is privacy. So those are the 15. So privacy is all about seclusion or getting away, that kind of a thing, okay? So that one's pretty self explanatory so here's the 15 benefit words. These are the 15 benefit words. So any feature, now this has been organic, meaning it's, I'm not saying that there couldn't be another benefit word, but I will tell you this. If, if one of you goes out and does a needs analysis with somebody, oh sorry, I'm standing right in the way now, I'm just trying to take a picture. I'm, I'm, and you come back and you say to me, man, I got this buyer and I've been out showing him 40 homes. Immediately in my head, they haven't crystallized. The reason they haven't bought is they haven't crystallized yet. Now, I'll say to you then, well, what are their three, two or three benefits that they're looking for? And here's what I'll hear. They need a lot of space. Is space one of the 15 benefit words? No. So what you're telling me when you say, well, they need a lot of space, what you're telling me is I didn't really drill down all the way to get to the benefit. And if you didn't, they probably didn't discover the benefit and until they do. Now, What's the purpose of us doing this needs analysis thing? Crystallization. Oh, we're getting better. We're getting better. And why is that important, Melanie? So they will buy. Because they're not going to buy until they do, right? So the whole point of this is we got to get them to crystallize because they're not going to buy. Or if it's a seller, they're not going to choose who they're going to list their home with until they have crystallized. Now, what are the chances? Let's speak really quickly on the difference between a buyer and a seller. So the process is still the same. There's no difference between doing this with a buyer and a seller. I still start with a directive, and then I'm gonna move over to what I'll show you as tool number two in a bit. But what we're trying to get to is the benefit. So what are the chances that on a seller, that what they're looking for in selling their home is aesthetics? All right. Highly, you think that is what they're looking for? The seller, not a oh, buyer. A seller. Oh. a seller. Somebody selling their home is looking for aesthetics. Very unlikely, right? How about love? Yeah. And, uh, so, what? Say more about that. What do you mean? They're gonna look for somebody who's gonna love their home just as much as they did. Or, okay. You know. Good. The other thing that will play into this, which here's the thing, typically with a seller, we think we need to go in and show them. Here's all this great stuff we have of what and why you should choose us. When in reality, 
what a lot of times the seller is concerned about is I got a job transfer and I got to leave my family behind here and I'm going to be without my family until this house is sold. So their biggest concern is what are you going to do to help me get it sold so I can be back with my family? So love could actually play into it. How about comfort? Remember comfort is like creature comfort that they want to be able to go. <sighs> now that's not going to be the same thing as peace of mind, security. No, no. So that's what you provide if you can take the pressure off. So, but again, that's that. I would say that's going to be security, not necessarily the comfort. There's, I know it's a fine line between the two. I think that, you know, and the one you go, okay, this guy's going to take care of it for me. Yeah, and it, so I guess it's possible that that's yeah. that. I typically would think of that though as it's more of the peace of mind of I don't have to worry now um, about it. So it's yeah, not okay. like I'm relaxed creature comfort kind of a thing, but it's I don't have to stress about it anymore. This guy's taking care of it. Okay. About, so what would it be then? What would, what, would, what would be an example of comfort? Well, that's, I don't, that's what I'm saying is I don't think with a seller you're going to come across. What you're going to find is there's less of these that are going to come into play. I mean, how about sex? Is that going to be part of with a seller? I mean, I guess that's how you could get the listing. Could comfort for a seller be like, well, I'm not going to have to drive two hours to work anymore because we're going to move closer. No, I would, that would say that's going to be more convenience wherever I, oh, yeah. I can't even see it because I spelled it so bad. <laughs> I spell yeah, yeah, because I spelled it so bad. So to me, that would be more of convenience is, is I'm looking for the convenience of being. There. So typically, though, you can see, I mean, probably not going to be, well, I guess could, you know, where they're selling the house because they want to get a bigger one to entertain. But as far as deciding on who they're going to choose as an agent, it's probably not going to be because you entertained them, you know, I mean. <laughs> So you, you get the point of all that, right? So everybody got these 15 benefit words? Okay, go ahead. Uh, you, what value do you buy in the, uh, most sellers? Uh, good question. So remember, value is yes. about making money. So is that going to come in play with the seller? No, yeah, probably. It probably is going to be, hey, our biggest concern is the home we're going to buy, we need every bit of money we can get out of this, so we need to have get as much as we can. I was thinking, I may not be thinking right, but I was thinking you provide values to the seller of some sort so that they choose you. Yes, for sure, that they're, they've so got to see value in us, but that's not necessarily the same thing. That's okay. going to be a different piece. Yes, for sure, they've got to see that you've got to provide value for them, but for them, this value is about them making money. Yeah, this is not going to help them crystallize what I Yeah. Correct. Everybody got this? How many raised it? I just want to read an email that a, a client sent me okay. last night. You know, I sent him a, an email asking, you know, is there anything different about what the homes I'm selling? I'm, I'm sending you on a hot sheet. She answered, maybe not enough land, but biggest issue is neighbors. I keep seeing houses next door to the houses you send. We want complete seclusion. See, I didn't bother to ask him about how much how big of a lot? I just bedrooms and baths and yeah. See, that's vacation. that's the this is where remember the top three complaints. They don't return my calls. They don't listen. So that's what essentially what she just said to him is, you didn't listen because I keep seeing these ask. houses. Well, but yeah, but or yeah, in their mind though, they probably think they did tell you. That's the other thing is we got to remember in their mind they probably think they told you because they do understand it down here. They just don't know how to communicate it. They don't know how to tell you that what it is that they're looking for. So yeah, what do you think her benefit is based on what you just said of those 15 benefit words? Privacy. 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 What they're now what we got to find out then is from them what we now remember what's the purpose of all this? Crystallization. Okay, good. And part of the process of this crystallization is for them to discover that, but we need to know the information. So just because somebody could walk in and say. Okay, look, I know what you're looking for is my three benefits. I need privacy, I need um, recreation, and I need love. You're not going to be able to go out necessarily. And you still got to find out, okay, so what are the features that are going to give you that? I mean, we still, yeah, we can't, we still got to have some idea. Otherwise, you're going to go out for you what privacy would be. And to them, maybe it's not. You know? How would you answer that back? Because we're saying privacy, but could you let them tell him now? Yeah, here's how I would answer that back. You know what we ought to do is let's sit down and spend 30 to 45 minutes so that I can ask you a few questions of things you maybe haven't thought of before. Is that going to be okay? And then I would sit down with them and say, describe for me the ideal home. Or at least get their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, start with the phone number then. Yeah. Yes, you're right. All right. I'm doing everything by email. Okay, so 
Now, let me introduce another piece to this for you, okay? So, gosh, I'm like way behind. Yeah, I'm like, we should be practicing right now and we're not, but that's okay. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, hopefully, it's, is it good? Or am I going too slow? All right. So, well, directives. I practice it when I go home. Good. Because you can use it not only for home, buying home, you say, you know, describe for me the ideal day for you. You're retired. What's your ideal day? I've asked my wife that. Okay, but remember, start with permission. Yeah, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> okay, okay, so good. So tool number one. Now, here's what we want to do. Now, and I will give to you today, and then I'm going to actually give you another one on Thursday that is going to be different. Well, different only because it's got the benefit words on it. This first one I'm going to give you doesn't have the benefits on it. But I'm going to give you what's called like a grid here. In fact, you know what, let me pass it out to you right now. <coughs> Take them and pass some of those around, pass some of those back. Okay? So now, what we're doing, what we want to do is when we ask this directive, describe for me your ideal home, what we want to do after we've asked them, describe for me the ideal home, we want to start taking notes. So you'll see on this paper that I'm giving you, there's this little grid there. You want to take notes of what they're talking about. Now, think about this grid as being like a mailbox. Like everybody, every one of you guys, whether you know it or not, well, maybe not all of you, the ones that are in Centerville or Orange, but yet there's a, we have a mailbox up there for you, and, and any mail that comes in for you, we would go put it in the mailbox, right? Well, think of this as the same way. So when I say to Y, describe for me your ideal home, and he starts to describe the ideal home to me, what I want to do is if, if he, let's say he starts talking about the backyard, I'm going to write down backyard here and then put notes of everything he talks about in the backyard. Then let's say he goes into the kitchen and starts talking about the kitchen. I'm going to keep notes in here about the kitchen. So think of it that way as like as they start to talk, this box becomes about whatever the first feature is they talk about. This one becomes the next. This one becomes the next. Now, I'm going to test you guys. And this isn't one this isn't the why are we doing this? But each by the way, why are we doing it? Crystal. Okay, good. Oh, good. I love the sound. Why would we not, sometimes I'll get the question, why would we not just write on here backyard, kitchen, basement, uh, garage, family room, living room? Prior. Because those are just because features. It's probably not, some of those might not be important for them. Good. Winner. That's right. If, if I have written on here, so if I had handed this out to you and it said here backyard, kitchen, family room, living room, garage, basement, um, master, den, storage, what would you do in your interview? Try to get all of them. Yeah, you would try to fill them all. You would go, oh, well, you haven't mentioned anything about storage, so tell me about storage, right? And we don't want to do that. That's why there's no, it's just blank. So really, you don't even need this paper. You could just get a blank piece of paper and draw this on it, and bam, you've got your grid for your client, okay? And then you just say, describe for me your ideal home. Now, when I say describe for me your ideal home and hand the baton to them, they're going to talk. Whatever features they talk about, just assign one of these boxes. And it doesn't matter. You could go this way if you want. If you want to go this way, you know, there's no right or wrong way. Whatever works for you. The other thing is develop some shorthand where you can just kind of write quickly of, you know, four BRs, bedrooms or something, whatever, however you want to do it so that you can keep notes. What, it, what other advantage does it provide by you keeping notes? You can so you refer can back to them. So good. We're going to be able to refer back. What else? Well, we forget. I mean, when you write things down, you tend to remember. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're going to tend to remember. They're going to give us a ton of detail, Pat. You're not interjecting yourself if you're busy writing. Okay, good. That's the other thing that will happen is by you writing down, you're probably not going to get in the way of the process. Good. Why else? They know you're listening. Good, yeah, they are going to know we're listening. So all of those things are exactly right, is, is we want to make sure they know I'm listening because I'm taking notes. Well, by putting it all together in a grid like that, then you're getting the big picture um, mm -hmm. of what they, they might be looking for. You can see it all together Perfect. right like that. Perfect. Good, yes. Okay, so I'm going to do this describe for me your ideal home. I'm going to take notes. Now, let's say that what happens is they say, you know, backyard, and they tell me it has to be big and flower beds, garden, whatever, okay? But that's all they've said is, you know, I want a big backyard, needs to have room for flower beds and a garden. Um, and then they say, I need a basement and it needs to have um, a family room down there, okay?
okay? And then they go to the garage. And then they skip from the garage to the um, study. And it needs to have enough room for a desk and some of that, okay? So I keep handing back the baton. What else? Keep going, tell me more. They eventually say, that's about it. I can't think of anything else. I don't know what else to tell you, okay? Now, what I want to do, so I'm still on tool one here. Anybody do woodworking in here? No woodworkers? Okay. I'll test you a little on it anyway. Okay. Usually there's one at least. Okay. If, if you were going to be sanding some, if you had done cut something out of wood, and you're going to sand it. Do you start with a coarse sandpaper or a fine? Coarse. coarse. Why? Because it's rougher. It takes more out. Chip out. more out. Yeah, it gets all the rough edges. What's the purpose of the fine sandpaper? Smooth yeah, it's to smooth. So think of this as that same way. This first time through is coarse sandpaper. We're just knocking off the rough, knocking off the rough edges. So we may use tool one, but use it a second time. Now, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to know, is when I look at my notes. If I see, like in this box, I've got all this information filled in on all these boxes. So I've got all this information, but here I don't have very much. I'm going to do a second pass on these two items because I need to get more information about those two items. Okay? So the second pass is, remember, coarse sandpapers knock off all the rough, rough edges. So the first time through, I'm just, describe for me your ideal home. And then I, that's as, as specific as I'm going to get. The second time through, though, he didn't give me much information about the basement. So then I would say, so why? You mentioned the basement. Tell me more about the basement. So I'm just doing another directive, but it's a more fine, because I'm saying, tell me more about the basement. But I waited for him. Remember, I waited for him to bring it up first. Now I'm just getting more detail on it. So describe for me, or tell me more about the basement. And then he's going to go, blah, 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 hand it to me. Great, what else? And he'll tell me what else, and he eventually he'll say that's about it. Now, the other thing that will happen on the second pass is I may say, tell me more about the basement, and he may start to tell me about the garage. If he does, great. I'll just start making notes about the garage while he does that. And he may drift off into something he hasn't talked about at all. Great. I'll just put that in a new box. Okay? But I'm going to say, what else? Keep going until he says that's about it. Then, so I'm going to give for sure one pass on this, maybe two. It is possible with some people that they'll give you all the detail on all these. So I got all this detail in every one of these boxes. I mean, and you don't have to fill up all of them. Remember, who's in charge? You. They are. They are. Well, I kind of am, but I'm going to let them think they are, right? So I'm going to, they're in charge of it because it's what they tell me about is what's important. So I'm going to do that and fill it out. Now, if they say that's about it and I can't get any more, but I have these boxes open, that's okay. Remember the guy that said, 10-minute walk from the University of Utah. I mean, you're, you, you didn't even need the grid, right? I mean, at that, so we just let them kind of decide where we're going. We're just there to guide it, right? So, okay, so I've done that. Now, so the next step along the way. So remember, I may do this two times, but for sure at once, but I'll do a second time. How do I know if I need a second? You don't have enough information. There's not enough detail on all that, right? Yeah, good. So now, what I'm going to do, though, now that I've got... Anybody have any concerns, actually, before I go to the next step? So, yeah. so we're still on features, though. Correct. Yeah, we're still doing features. So Thank you. So we don't you. go into the trying to make them understand. Not yet. Okay. Not, at this point, we're just gathering the information. So just think of it as this point. I'm just trying to draw as much out. Now, and in fact, let me help you see it. Similar to what I did with Dan up here. I'm just trying to get them to tell me all the stuff they pictured about it. And... The next step, actually, is then I'm going to have them start telling me the decisions they've made about it. So this first one is about pictures. What do they picture? That's, so if you think about it that way, that's what we're doing. Is we're getting the picture out of their head. Okay. So once I've got that, the next step is I'm going to have them then rank. Now, sometimes what people will, sometimes agents will stress a little bit about, they're giving me all this detail, like, I'm never going to find a house that has everything perfect like that, which is probably true. You're probably not. But that doesn't mean they have to go build, right? Because what are we looking for? Crystallization. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> but a little more specific. Two what, to three. Two yeah, two three. to three benefits is what we're trying to kneel down, right? So what happens is to begin with, they're giving me all this information. What I'm going to do before I go to tool number two is now I'm going to have them rank it. So the, the, how I get from here now to tool number two over here is I'm going to have them rank. So what that looks like is this. I'm going to say, why? You've given me a ton of information about this home. 
of everything we've talked about, what are the two or three most important items? And what are they going to give me? Probably five or six. <laughs> no. What are they going to give If I say give me the two or three, what are they going to typically give me? Two or three. Two or three. That's, so remember, this is how communication works. I'm going to get what I asked for. So why would I not say give me the three? Because you don't want to be specific. specific. Yeah, and if I say give me three, how many are they going to give me? Three. What if two are only important? If two are only important and I say give me three, they're going to give me three. Now I go out and this is where we get in our own way. See, but by saying two or three, I'm kind of really just saying, tell me which one, which of everything we've talked about are important. Now, why else would I say oh, two or three? Because I don't want five or six. If they might give me four, what will happen is they'll go, okay, I want the backyard, the study, the garage. Oh, gosh, I don't know, though. The garage and the basement are pretty close. I mean, and I just be quiet and let them sort through it because they may say, I think I gotta have all, all four of those. Great, then I'll take all four. But if they, otherwise they may go, you know, I mean I guess we don't have to have a garage. So I guess those three. So let them kind of tell you. So you're asking which are most important? What are the two or three, what are the two or three that are most three important? Now again, just remember in communication, we're going to get back what we ask. If I say what are the most important, I may get five or six. They may say, actually at this point, if you say what are most important, they'll say all of it. Everything is. So again, just think about how communication works. You're going to get back what you ask for. So give me the two or three, you're probably going to get two or three. And that's what we need, okay? So I'm going to have them rank them. Then the next step along the way is going to be modifiers. Now the modifiers, now Here's what's funny with this, before I give you the modifiers. During this process, we want to talk a whole bunch. Like, we're going to want to interrupt them. We're going to want to start talking about other pieces, ask more questions. But do we do that during the directives? No. no. What do we do? What's the only, after you've said, describe for me your ideal home, what's the only things you can say? Tell me, Tell me more. Tell me more. What else? That's wonderful. That's great. Keep going. Wonderful. That's great. Wow. Interesting. Oh. Cool. Oh, and that's neat. So that's all we get to do. We don't get to say, oh, well, what do you think about this or that? No. During this phase, that's all we're doing, okay? Now, in the modifiers, we're going to ask who, what, when, where, and how. Did you notice I left one out? Why? I left out why. Why would I leave out why? Important. No, it's very important. Because we already know the why. Well, I, I don't know the why yet. Going back to the triangle, he doesn't know the why yet. Okay, good. So p typically, it's partially because they don't know the why. The other reason is the why is what's going to cause crystallization to occur. The why is what will bring it together. But but to what, what Brad's saying is right. If I ask the why too soon, what they'll say is it would be great. Why do you need that? Well, because it would be perfect. Is that a benefit word? It would be perfect. No. Oh, it'd be great. No. It's just what we need. That if you ask the why too soon, that's what you'll get. Well, it's just what we need. It's too soon, okay? Think of it this way. I, I, I always forget to do this. If I had this cup here and I filled it up with water and I, I keep pouring water in, Eventually, can I get it to where water is actually over the top of the rim? Yes. What's that called? Yeah, I can. It's What's it called? Tension. Tension. Say it again. Surface tension. It's called surface tension. What happens is you could actually, and I usually do a demonstration with this, I'll pour it in there until the water is actually, you can see it just up over the rim. What happens though as soon as I put one more drop in? Yeah. Then it goes over the top, right? <laughs> That's what we're trying to create. Think about that with this. The whole thing we're trying to do is create that. We're building surface tension. And then we're going to put in the one last drop. The one last drop is why. Okay? So we don't ask the why at this point. So at this point, so let's, let's, so, so I keep saying why, now I'm going to say, so why? Hey. Will you help me out? Yeah. Just make stuff up. So give me the two or three most important things we've talked about here. So I'm having him, I'm having him rank. Give me the two or three most important. I need a big backyard with a patio and... So here's what I would do. Big backyard, patio, okay. And I need um, 
like the second floor to have a balcony, like okay. a wraparound porch. So I'll do balcony here, okay. We'll assume we've done that. And I need a two-car garage. Two-car garage, okay. So boom, now I've got those. Now the next step, before I get into modifiers, which one of those is number one? The so backyard. notice first I'm saying give me two or three. Now that I've got them, which one's number one? The backyard. Okay, and number two? Uh, the about the garage. Garage, okay, and then that would mean this one's three, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's how you do this. Now, because I've got that, now I'm going to start with number one, and I'm going to drill down. So think of it this way. Now I'm going to take that box, so this backyard box, and I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the directive again, and then I'm going to jump over here to a modifier, and I'm going to ask the modifiers. I'm doing too many arches there on the. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to do the modifiers, and I'm going to do on this, I typically want five to seven modifiers. So I'm typically going to ask five to seven of these modifiers. I'll, here's what I will tell you. Typically, remember I jokingly on Thursday said, we want to skip the foreplay and go have real estate with our clients? You remember that? That, this is where I'm talking about it. We want to skip the foreplay. We want to jump right ahead. Let's just hurry and go have real estate, okay? So instead, we want to slow it down. During these modifiers, most agents will tend to not ask enough modifiers. We want to ask more modifiers. So the modifiers are always going to start with one of these. So let, let me show you what I mean. So he said backyard. So I'm going to stay, uh, here's how I would do it. Now remember, I'm going to try to link all this together for you. What I'm trying to do is cause... Okay, good. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, let's try it again. What am I trying to cause? Crystallization. Crystallization, right? So I start with the pictures. So I'm going to say what? Picture yourself in the backyard. Now remember, look at I'm giving him a directive. Picture yourself in the backyard. Tell me what you see. And then he's going to start telling me what he sees. Essentially, I'm telling him, I'm giving him an instruction. Go to this part of your brain and tell me what you've got stored in there. So he's going to start telling me what it is. Then I'll move to the modifiers. The modifiers are now the decisions he's made about it. So, so let, let's, and you can make it up, I don't really sure. care. So um, picture yourself in the backyard, tell me what you see. Uh, it needs to have um, uh, is it a patio where, it's like, where it has a roof and there's a built-in brick grill. Notice what I'm doing. Brick grill, spot for everybody to hang out. Uh -huh. Sure. Um, yard obviously and then I need uh, unattended part of the yard to be a garden okay good so now what I want to do is build on what he said so it's important that I actually listen to what he said because he said something about having people over so I would just now go to what are the decisions he's made so and you don't have to go in order of this but so you mentioned having people over who do you who do you have over so now I get to start asking all these questions that you want here's what's funny when I have you guys practice this, you want to ask all these questions here. Now when I would get over to here and I say, go ahead and ask the questions, you're like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what question to ask. It's all the stuff you wanted to ask before, right? So I'm gonna, who, who do you have over? Uh, family and friends. Usually, so, usually. So there would be one question. I was going to say usually our house is, is the house people always come to and hang out. So yours is the house that people like to hang out. See, I'm just going to repeat. Okay, great. So how often do you do that? So I'm just going to start jumping around. How often do you do that? I would say two to four times a month. Oh wow, two to four times, really? Before. Wow. Okay, awesome. Cool. Well, what kinds of now? I'm gonna, what kinds of things do you guys do when you have the people over? Uh, we'll do karaoke. See now, why am I asking these questions? You're building a rapport. Okay, good for sure. But why else? Shows you care. It shows that I care. You're trying to get them to crystallize. I'm trying to get him to crystallize, and the process of it is I got to get him. We've accessed this part of the brain. Now I got to get him to access this part of the brain. What are the decisions that you've made about the backyard? Why? What is it about the backyard that that is important? What does it have the layout or whatever? So that's what the kind. Of, I'm going to ask who. You know, when do you do it? Where? Where in the backyard are you going to be? Well, he mentioned, then from there, now I'm going to go into, he had also mentioned the garden. Okay, so after I've asked him a few of those questions, now you mentioned a garden. How big, how big does the garden need to be? Um, I would say... Well, it doesn't matter. Make it yeah. up. So that, but notice, like, he's actually wanting to <laughs> access that. So then I'm going to say, what kinds of things do you grow in the garden? Uh, jalapenos, tomatoes, blah, blah, blah. See, I'm just going to ask all these questions of who all works in the garden. 
How, you know, how big does it need to be? All that stuff. Yeah. You ask five to seven for every top three feature. Yes. Okay. But but we're still notice how many questions I've asked though so far, and we're still on on. In the backyard. So when you say feature, tell me. I, I, well. I was, they've identified their top three, they've ranked it, and you're going to modifiers. Do you go through the modifier process for every one of those top three? So the top three meaning these yeah, three? because you say five yes. to seven modifier yes. questions. So yes, per, per, yes, per, thank you, per, okay. yes, thank you for asking. Okay. Per of these, but, but, but here's the key. I'm going to stick with this one until I get to the benefit. So yes, okay. I'm going to ask five to seven, but I'm going to stick with this one, So which that's kind of, let me take you into the next step here, is going to be what's called the tag, okay? The tag, the tag is gonna be one of two questions, so write these down. What does blank mean to you? So on this example, after I've asked the five to seven about the backyard, now here's the truth, sometimes you may ask 15. It's okay if you ask a lot of questions. What's not okay is to only ask two or three. I got to get five to seven minimum, okay? But then once I've done that five to seven, and and he and I feel like he's starting to crystallize. Now I add that last drop of water that makes it overflow of saying, so why? What does having that kid or that backyard mean to you? And what should happen is he should either tell me one of those fifteen benefit words, or he'll talk around one of those benefit words. He might not say it, but he'll talk around. Go ahead. But if if you were asking me about the backyard and like who do you entertain it, now pretty soon it's almost getting too much. Who, who cares who I entertain? <laughs> Great question. Remember when, during permission I said some of the questions may be may feel personal? And I said you guys are gonna have an issue of like I don't want to ask that on permission. This is why we ask this is why I think it's a good idea during permission to say some of the questions may be personal, maybe things about the detail. So you can even add on permission. It's going to be some detail about the home that, that maybe to you feels like, well, who cares? But just trust me in the process. I mean, it's going to help me to know what you're looking for in a home. So, and then that way, I've already asked for permission. So let's hypothetically do it, though. So let's say I ask, so who's going to be using it? And you, let's say you were like a little old. Oh, you know, I just have people over, you know, every once in a while. So as soon as they like, if, as soon as I felt them like withdrawing, I want to go back and establish permission again. I would just say, hey, totally understand, Pauline. Remember how at the start of this I was telling you some of the questions might feel personal, be, be things that maybe won't even make sense why I'm asking them? This would be one of those questions. So are you okay talking about it? Okay. Then, bam, I'm getting permission again. Yes, bam. Now she'll start to talk. She'll be all right, I'll just, you know, I may even have to just trust me on it. it it'll make sense at the end. Okay? So who, who often, who all comes over? Uh, mostly family. Yeah, see, Bowman, I'm right back into it. Okay. okay? So good. Great question. So. For this box number one, the backyard, I'm going to do the modifiers, then I'll jump over here and do the tag for that. Then from there I'm going to go over to what is called the summary. Or I'll drop down here to what's called the closed end. Okay? So let me do it in both places here. This is going to be summary. I just realized I switched my colors up. But <laughs> Closed in. So that's close. I'll show you what it looks like. So let's so let's say um, that I've been asking him about the backyard, and I've asked the five to seven. So why? What does having that backyard mean to you? <coughs> it just means um, having a good time, making everybody feel welcome. Okay. So what I would do is from there. So the other tag question is why is that important? So if I I could either say Okay, so why is having that, that backyard important to you? So either what does it mean or why is that important are the two tag questions. That's putting that last drop in where crystallization should occur. So I say, what does having it mean to you? He said... It's, it's just uh, means it's welcoming and we're all having a good time. Okay, much. so what does that sound like of the 15 benefit words? Recreation. Recreation? Comfort. 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 Any other ideas? Yeah. Love, could be love. See, for me, that's where I went to, is I think it's when he said having the people over and that kind of... Now, the truth is, we're only right if he agrees to it. So what I'm going to do, because he didn't say it, is I'm going to do a summary. I'm going to say, so if I understand you correctly, what it sounds like this backyard for you is about entertaining. 
Correct. And they're either and what you're looking for with that when you ask the summary and you say so if I understand you correctly what you're looking for is and then you say one of the benefit words you're looking for them to either have an aha moment which sometimes it will be like yeah they'll like they'll act like holy cow yes that is what I want it for which is awesome so other times though now wa everybody watch closely because this is when you ask the tag make sure you're watching their face because what you may get is this <laughs> if they do that what are they telling you no, it's like did you hear what I said I mean they'll do it it'll be very slight though so I had one time that I did it where I said so it sounds like what you're looking for is and I think I said privacy and she went like this I gotta stop for a second and think through she went just like this yeah <laughs> so you gotta watch because the body will tell the truth their words might not tell the truth but the body will tell the truth so you gotta watch because and so what I did is she went just like that yeah and I said that's not it is it she goes no and I said well so what is it then and then she went on to tell me what it was and I don't remember what it was but but so like you gotta watch when you say what does having that mean to you because when I watched him he said yes you're looking for something that's like if it's hesitant at all say that's not it is it and they'll go no well then what is it and then they'll usually either say the word or they'll at least explain it well enough that you'll go okay I got it somebody have a hand Carl. okay we're about almost out of time are we going to find out? Thank you for the reminder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. Are we going to find out how we're going to take this information and find a house for them? Yeah. Come back on Thursday. Yeah, that'll be Thursday. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. Here, let me let me answer that question actually just with the story. And, and, did I, and maybe I told you already. But when I got back, the first buyer, I, oh, I started to tell you and I didn't finish. I did it with my wife and it was weird and blah, blah, blah. I, I then, after I called the guy, he said, just ask for permission and with a buyer, you're going to be fine. The next buyer that came into my office, I sat him down in my office and I said, all right, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, so I asked for permission. I said, describe for me your ideal home. They, I took them through it. They described it. I did the modifiers. I did the tag. We landed on the benefits. We got in the car. I went then and said, I'm going to go find two or three homes that will match what you've told me that you're looking for in a home. So I'm going to go out and find two or three homes that, will, that are, are in your price range, have all these things that we've talked about, will match the, these benefits that you're looking for in the home. We get in the car. We drive up to the first house. We haven't even walked into the house yet. I just parked. And he, he was in the front seat. His wife was in the back. And she, he turned around to her and goes, this is it. And she goes, yep. And I was like, oh, hold on. Because I'm used to showing them 40 houses, you know. So I'm like, hold, well, let's go in inside and let's make sure that it really does work for what you're looking for in a home. So, all right, we walk in the door. Yep, this is the place. And I'm like, what was their comfort word that they were looking at? I don't remember. I don't remember what it was now. But, but I'm like, this can't be that easy. So I'm like, and, and I was, had only been in the business about two years at the time. Not, probably not even quite that, but. So I'm like, well, I've got appointments first. I mean, I'm like almost trying to convince them that it, you know, you got to look at more than one. And so I'm like, well, I've got two others that we're going to go look at. So let's go take a look at those and make sure. So we drive over and look at the second one. And they're like, no, we want the first one. I'm like, all right, well, let's go to the third one. Go to the third one. They're, no, we really, we still want the other one. So I went back and wrote the offer. I mean, today I'd never do that. You pull up and they say, this is it. Great. Let's write an offer, right? <laughs> so don't. We make it harder than it needs to be, and, and also, sometimes we judge the process sitting here learning it without actually going and doing it. Like we think, well, that wouldn't work for me, but the truth is, if you will give them the chance to really talk and explore this, it accomplishes two things. Number one, it causes? Crystallization. All right, it causes? Crystallization. I still am missing people. It causes? Crystallization. There we go, thank you. Number two is you are going to have them be very connected with you, meaning yes, they are going to leave this process feeling like wow. this person understands me. They know what I'm looking for. They, I mean, they're going to take good care of me. That's, and so regardless of what happens. Now, the other thing that I will say is do not finish this needs analysis process without, at the end of it, get agency signed if you don't already have it. 
because they will sign no problem right then. As soon as you've taken them through this, and so I'm going to go through on box one, do all of this, get land on a so the closed end. So let's. So I said it's about entertaining. He said yes, great. So one of the things we're looking for in your home is a place to entertain. That's what closed end is. So one of the things is we're looking for is someplace to entertain. Then I'm going to go to number two. We'll drill down. Well, let's say we land on for the garage it's self actualization. Boom. So. Second thing we're going to be looking for then in a home is some place that you can have that place where you can go out and do your woodwork. I may not say self-actualization because, again, he may be like, what? I don't know. So is that place you can go out and you know, spend time working in, in your garage? Yep. Okay, great. Number three is what you're looking for is that balcony where you can go out and have some um, whatever. You know, sit down and be relaxed, whatever. Okay? So those are the, now that I know what you're looking for in a home, then... Let me tell you how I work. So that's the transition if I don't already have agency. Let me tell you how I work. I'm going to go out and look at every home in the market in your price range, but I'm only going to show you the ones that meet your needs. Why would I want to tell them that? I'm going to go look at everything in your price range, but I'm only going to show you the ones that meet your needs. I'm not wasting mine or theirs. Like, there's no sense us going and looking at homes that don't meet these needs, right? So I'm going to go out and do the work for you to find that, to find the ones that will work for you. But I'm only going to show you the ones that actually will work for you. So in my experience, I'm going to have to look at 10 to find one house that will work for you. So what that means is if we go out and look at three or four, I'm going to have looked previewed 30 to 40 for you to save you. The, and you can even say to save you the time. And then I'm only going to show you the ones that actually meet your needs. So I'm willing to do that, provided that during the time we're working together, you'll commit to working exclusively with me. They'll say, yes, great. I've got an agreement that states that here in writing. Bam, have them sign agency. Okay, make sense? The other thing that I want to, and I'll end on this, is after that, after they've signed agency, I'm going to say, great. If they haven't already been with a lender, let's get them with the lender, get them all approved. We're going to go out and look at houses on Friday or whenever it is. Now, when we go out, bring a checkbook or go get a check because we're going to go find a house for you on Friday. So get a checkbook. The other thing is, after every house we look at, I'm going to ask you, do you want to write an offer on this house? I'm not trying to pressure you when I ask you that, but I just want to make sure I'm not wasting your time showing you houses that don't meet, meet your needs. So I'm going to ask you after every single house, do you want to write a, an offer on it? A no is just as important to me as a yes. So don't feel like I'm pressuring you to do something you don't want to do. I just need to know that I heard you right and that I'm not wasting your time looking at properties that aren't going to work for you. So on Friday, make sure you bring your checkbook because we're going to go find you a house. Now, how easy does that make it on Friday after I walk out of the first house to say, Tony, do you want to write an offer on this house? And he shouldn't feel pressured because I already told him. I'm not trying to pressure you. I just want to make sure that if we find the right house, I mean, especially in our current market, we need to jump on it. So do you want to write an offer on this house? No. No, great. Okay. Wad up the piece of paper, throw it in the trash. Let's go to the next house. Come out. Do you want to write an offer on this house? Sure. You do? Great. Let's go. Then we go write the offer. If he said, uh, let's go see the last one. Great. Let's go. Come out of the third one. Do you want to write an offer on this one? Ah, uh, I don't know. Well, of number two and number three, which one would you choose if you had to? Two. Two? Okay, great. Wad up number three. Throw it in the back seat. Okay, so do you want to write an offer on number two? Sure. Okay, great. Let's do it. I mean, that's, that's all this process looks like, okay? What questions? The closed ending, what did you say that was? I know you said yeah. recognizing this. The, so I'm going to do a summary. So if I understand you correctly, it sounds like entertainment's one of the things you look for. He says yes, I'm going to say great. So, so one of the things we're looking for as we go out is entertainment. Now, if he had set it up here though, so if I had said what does having that backyard mean to you and he said, Oh, we love to entertain, so it would mean we would be able to entertain. I'm not going to say, so if I understand you correctly, entertaining is important. I mean, you could, I guess, but that wouldn't make sense. So I would just drop right to the, that's why this dotted line, if they say the word, so if they said it would give me privacy, I'm not going to say, so if I understand you correctly, that it's going to give you privacy, right? I mean, I'm just going to go straight to closed end. So one of the things you're looking for is privacy. So I'll skip the summary if they've said the word, but if they talked around it, I'm going to say, so if I understand you correctly, I just want to make sure what we're looking for is privacy. Yes. Great. Now, when I go out and show the properties, though, I'm not going to walk through and, and do nothing. I'm going to walk through, and if he's talked about privacy, 
on the balcony. I'm gonna, we're gonna walk out on the balcony and I'm gonna say, so why, does this look like it's gonna give you the privacy that you need? See, I talk about the benefit, not the feature. Is this gonna give you the privacy? And he's gonna go, oh God, it would, except for the, that one over the, you know. Well, so then I'm gonna try to offer a solution. Well, what if we put a fence there or you put a tree that, you know, would that, if a tree was there, would that give you the privacy? Yeah, it probably would. Okay, great. Let's go to the, whatever the next feature was, and I'm going to talk to him about the garage or whatever. Does that make sense? So we talk about the feature, not or excuse me, the benefit, not the feature, when we're showing the house. You said you can tell who's going to buy and who's not going to buy. At what point does the not buyer? Go oh, yeah, great question. Good, thank you. Yes. So as I'm going through some of these modifiers. Some of the stuff that they may tell me may be like way unrealistic or whatever. And again, they're buying the feature, not the benefit. But if, if somebody were to say, like, uh, so I'll give you another example of me. When I, before I bought the home I'm in, when I went down to the training, the two benefit words that I had was one was recreation. The, uh, the second one, what I said was, uh, when I, my next house needs to have a swimming pool in the basement. The house I live in does not have it. We bought a house since then, but when I showed up, I said it's got to have a swimming pool in the basement. So somebody says they need a swimming pool in the basement, and they're pre-qualified for two hundred thousand. Oh. If what they're saying is so, you're going to offer solutions. So great question, Pat. I'm going to offer solutions during the modifiers. So I'm going to say, well, what if what if we found a home, but it didn't have a pool in the basement, which mine doesn't, but it had one just right out in the community, right outside, which ours does. And they say, no, yeah, that would be fine. Great, that's somebody I can work with. If they said, nope, it's gotta be in the basement. Okay, well, what if there's not any houses in the $200,000 range that have a, a pool? Well, I'm gonna find one. Okay. That, that's when I would start to go, all right, that's, this is somebody. That, I'll tell you, it doesn't happen very often. Somebody who's willing to come to your office and sit down and meet with you, they're typically gonna be real versus over the phone, they may tell you all kinds of stuff, and yeah, and, and we want to go see the house, and you'll, they'll let you go show them, but to hey, let's sit down and really have a conversation about it, very rare, they'll, they'll fight you. So more times than not, it's the resisting of that. Remember I told some of you guys, buyers who buy? They're liars. They, no, not they're liars. <laughs> they buy. <laughs> they're buyers. buyers who buy, buy, right? And what do they buy? Benefit. No. You forgot it already? Crystalline. No. <laughs> Nobody remembers? Well, I can't do it now. We're already over time. Tony, say it again. They buy every relevant step along the way. So if they're not willing to buy the relevant steps, they're not a buyer. So that's really more what it is, Pat, is they're fighting me all the way on it. It's like, look, I, it, you don't have to use me and I don't have to help you. So it's whatever, Could, you know. Couldn't you just say, well, then, you know, I don't see any of these. If you see one, I'll, yeah, I'll give me a call. call and I'll exactly. That's, and, and I would not have them sign agency. That's yeah. exactly right. Give me a call if you see one then. I mean, if, it, if you landed on like there's no budget, <coughs> great. Then you know what? Let's go do something else. So cool. All right. What other questions? Okay, thanks for being here. See you Thursday. Oh, Thursday though, so I already mentioned. We'll, we will still start on time, but I'm personally probably gonna be a little late, so I've got um, one of the other brokers will be in here to get you started on it. But um, I've, just, I've got a professional standards hearing. I've gotta be to at nine, but as soon as I'm done, I'll be here. So. I have a yes or no question. No. Um, when I go door to door and somebody's not home, is it legal for me to put a flyer in their mailbox? No. Oh, oh see, I even no. answered it right. I said no. No, you can't. Is not in their mailbox. In, in their door? In their yes. Oh, the door, the yes, not, not the mailbox. The mailbox. Okay. On the outside of the mailbox, yes, not in the mailbox. Better. Okay. Chris, yeah. you mentioned that uh, the streaming would be in a different place. Um, well, not through the Ustream anymore? Or for Ustream, Ustream, that's true. Ustream will be gone. As far as the peak agent stuff, it'll end up in both okay. for now. What was that CE that, how did you ask that last question? The close in? Yeah. So um, one of the things you're looking for, so it's really not a question, it's more of a yes or a no. Okay. So what we're looking for in the home is price. And I'm looking for them to say yes. Well, I picked up on professional standards here myself. I can't think of